Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about everything that you need to know related to Reliance Industries rights issue of May 2020. We are going to talk about the details of the issue. We are going to talk about the application process, taxation and many more things. So to begin with, what is a rights issue? So in a rights issue, company issues new shares to existing shareholders, but at a discount to the ongoing current market price. That is why it is called as rights issue because only the existing shareholders have the right to buy these new shares which are being offered by the company at a special discounted rate. So if you talk about the reliance rights issue, the company is going to issue one additional share for every 15 shares that the shareholder is holding as on the record date. This new shares issued by the company will be issued at a price of 1,257 rupees per share, whereas the current market price of Reliance shares is 1,409 rupees per share as on 19th May 2020. In another words, in this rights issue, Reliance is offering new shares to its existing shareholders at a discount of 12 to 15 percent uh, compared to the ongoing market price. So if the shares are issued at 1,257 per share, company is expected to raise around 53,000 crores from this rights issue. Most of this money is going to be used to repay its debt. Almost three fourths of this money is going to be used by the company to repay its debt because ultimate aim of the company is to become completely debt free by March 2021. So just to give you a perspective of current debt position of the company, there is around 3,36,000 crores of debt on its book right now, 1,75,000 crore of cash as on um, end of March 2020. And the net debt therefore is 1.61 lakh crores. Okay, and this they are planning to bring it down to zero by March 21. And that is why they have gone into a spree of fundraising uh, activity or in uh, recently so by mainly selling minority stakes so they sold minority stakes in geo related platform to facebook and in that process they were able to raise 43000 crores another 23000 crores they they were able to raise by selling stake to private equity investors 7000 crores uh, through investment by british petroleum and this rights issue is expected to give them around 15 53000 odd crores so, but the point is this, the money that is going to be raised in this rights issue is basically going to help Reliance to be debt free by March 2021. Now let's talk about in from investors point of view. So if your name reflects in the list of shareholders as on the record date, okay, then you are eligible to for the for uh, for getting this new rights shares which are going to be issued to the existing shareholders but the existing shareholders as on the record date are going to be considered and the record date declared by the company is 14th May. So if you want your name to reflect in the list of shareholders on 14th, you should buy the share actually a couple of days back before, before 14th because um, you, uh, you know, in India you have T plus two trading cycle in the sense that it takes two days for the shares to come in your DMAT account from the point you buy from the market. So you, sh you ideally, um, you know, for the shares that you bought on 12th or before 12th, by 14th, uh, you know, they would have come in your account and they would be eligible to receive the additional shares under the right issue. So therefore, the X right date is actually 13th May, which means for shares bought on 13th and after 13th, they are not going to be entitled for any kind of rights issue. So now let's talk about an investor who is entitled for this rights issue. He is entitled to receive this additional share, one additional share for every 15 existing shares that he is holding at a price of 1,257 rupees per share. Such an investor can exercise his rights or subscribe to this um, new shares that are getting issued from 20th, uh, from, uh, 20th of May 2020. That is the issue opening date. And the issue will remain open till 3rd June 2020. So 20th May to 3rd June is the period during which the existing shareholders can subscribe to this right shares, uh, you know, um, which are being offered at 1,257 rupees per share. Now, a lot of investors get confused that how many shares are they entitled for? And, you know, because they are, they don't remember, you know, what they had bought before the record date, what was bought after the record date. So there are two ways to find out, uh, you know, how many shares you are entitled in this rights issue. So one is to find out what is your rights entitlement simply by looking at your DMAT account. 
because uh, based on the uh, you know uh, existing shareholders as on the record date whoever are the existing shareholders uh, to to their demat account the right entitlements would have been credited so basically your right to buy these additional shares is dematerialized and credited to your demat account with a special isin number so it has a unique isin number on the lines of what you can see on your screen this is not the isin number of reliance because these are not reliance shares these are right entitlement to reliance shares and they are having they are having a different isin number and using that you can identify them and looking at them you can come to know how many shares you are entitled to subscribe or entitled to receive under this uh, rights issue the second way to find out what is your rights entitlement is to visit the registrar and transfer agent website um, where you will just need your basic information like your dp id client id folio number in case you are holding physical shares of reliance and pan number uh, with this basic detail you can visit the rta website and from there you can obtain your reliance and uh, you can obtain your rights entitlements um, and come to know how many shares you are entitled for in this rights issue the same link is also available on the company's website www.rl.com from there also it gets diverted to this rta website from where you can get to know your rights entitlement so let's say as an investor you are curious to know how many uh, shares are you entitled to receive and using this you find that out and using this you ultimately find out that yes there are some right entitlements uh, you know accruing to you then the next question is what do you do about them so you will be faced with three options okay once you discover that there are some right entitl entitlements accruing to you then you have three options first option being you just allow them to lapse in which in in in, in the case that you don't take any action they will lapse automatically but the second option is you can subscribe to these uh, right uh, rights entitlements in the sense that let's say you are entitled to receive 10 shares of reliance uh, at 1 to 57 rupees per share so what you do is you pay 1 to 57 rupees per share and buy these shares from the company and that is what is meant by subscribing to your rights entitlements and the third option is you renounce your rights to somebody else for somebody else to buy these shares but that somebody else will give you some consideration in return so let me give you an example let's say mr a had got the right to buy 10 shares of reliance at 1 to 57 rupees per share but a did not buy these shares he a sold this rights to b for 100 rupees per share for a consideration of 100 rupees per share so now if you look from mr b's point of view okay why would mr b get into such a transaction mr b will pay 100 rupees per share to a to get this rights uh, in his name and once he has the rights he is he'll exercise it with the company and pay 1 to 57 to the company and get shares for uh, for total of total amount per share it will come to 1357 because 100 rupees he is paying to a and 1 to 57 rupees per share he is paying to the company so he is pay, totally paying 1357 rupees per share uh, to get uh, you know uh, to get his shares whereas the market price is around 1409 rupees so still he is ending up making profit of 50 rupees and that is the reason why he will be comfortable doing this you know so in a you know so even though he is paying additional 100 rupees to a to buy these rights but uh, even after that his cost is much lesser than the market price and that is the reason why people buy these rights you know from people who want to sell or renounce their rights now if you see from mr a's point of view he is receiving 100 rupees per share from mr b without having to invest anything because if he would have subscribed to this rights rights issue with, uh, to the company he would have have to pay 1257 rupees per share to the company get the share sell it on the exchange and book his profit but by renouncing his shares to mr b he is getting 100 rupees directly from mr b without having to invest any of money any without me having to make any investment of his own so that is a uh, some incentive for mr a to get into this kind of right renunciation transaction so in short this is what is right uh, rights renunciation in which uh, you sell your existing rights to somebody else for a consideration and uh, that can also be a sensible thing to do on many occasions 
um, because we are covering the tax part as well. At this point, I'll just uh, cover up the tax related to the renunciation part. If you see from Mr. B's point of view, he's paying 100 rupees to Mr. A and 1,257 rupees to the company. So his total cost of acquisition is 1,357 rupees. And this will be his cost of acquisition. Going forward, he'll sell the shares and whatever is the selling price, minus this cost price is his capital gains. If he sells within one year, it will be short-term capital gain tax at 15%. If he sells after one year, it will be long-term capital gains tax at 10%. And, and taxation from Mr. A's point of view is that he's receiving 100 rupees per share upfront right now. This and rights is, you know, uh, rights is considered as a capital asset. And when you renunciate your um, right, it is considered as transfer of capital asset. So this 100 rupees per share that Mr. A receives will be treated as short-term capital gains in the hands of Mr. A, okay? The last part about right renunciation is, how will Mr. A find Mr. B and vice versa? In another words, how to find the counterparty? Like if looking at this video, you feel like, let me renounce my rights if I get a good price for it. Uh, then how do you find a counterparty? Is there a secondary market available where these uh, rights entitlements are traded? The answer is yes. You can renounce the right, um, you know, in two ways. One is on market, which is uh, which is basically through the exchange. On the exchange, these right entitlements are traded literally. And uh, you know, if you want to renounce your rights, you can put a sell order. People want to buy these rights, like Mr. B in our example, can place a buy order, and when the order will match, uh, then the trades will get executed. So such kind of trading is going to happen from. 20th May 2020 to 29th May 2020 in this Reliance Entitlements, uh, you know, for rights renun renunciation. And that is through the on-market route. But you can also renounce your shares off-market, like in our example of A and B. A will transfer his rights entitlements from his DP account to DP account of B through an off-market transaction by filling up a DP slip Okay, and in return, B will pay 100 rupees per share uh, to A, and that's how the transaction will get completed. So, in other words, you can do an off market transaction also, uh, you know, for rights and renunciation, and you can do an on market transaction also for your rights and renunciation. Okay, um, uh, if you do on market transaction, remember 29th May is the last day if you want to buy or sell your uh, right entitlements. And in off-market transaction, make sure, you know, if you've bought any, uh, sh you know, uh, right entitlements in this process, they are credited in your account before the issue closure date, okay? Now, let's talk about, instead of renouncing the shares, you want to subscribe to the shares, you know, uh, which are being offered by the company, then what we are talking about is the application process for this rights issues. Now, the application process, there are two ways to apply, you know, for your rights. One is uh, the ASBA system and second is RWAP uh, system. So let's talk about ASBA system. Uh, so ASBA is application supported by block amount. Uh, you are basically using your bank's payment gateway to make application, uh, you know, to buy these uh, right shares from the company at a special price of 1,257 rupees per share. So just like you buy, you know, you, uh, you, you make an offer for in an IPO, uh, like that here you are you know the procedure is very same very straightforward and the main difference between asba and rwap is that in asba the amount is not debited from your account it's only blocked and then whatever is your only you know after your allot allotment if you know uh, whatever amount is left in your account is then released you know so it is that's why called as application uh, supported by block amount, okay, and not amount which is debited. Versus in RWAP, what is going to happen is at the time of application, the whole amount is going to get debited from your account and it will go into an escrow account, and then the shares will be allotted to you. And then if there is any surplus left in the escrow account, it will be returned back to you. So between the two, ASBA is better, but RWAP is another way in which you can uh, make application for this rights issue. So we'll talk about uh, RWAP more. So WAP stands for Web Application Portal or Web Application uh, Program. And R is basically signifying that a resident Indian only can, uh, you know, apply for this rights issue through RWAP, okay? 
um so for this you have to go to the website of the rta as i told you only a resident indian can apply uh, the process is completely online so you will be filling an online application form on the website link that i have given you and you will need your basic details like your dp id client id folio number in case you are holding physical shares of reliance and pan number and with that you fill the online application form there will be an email and mobile verification process and then you can make payment by internet banking and upi so in our app it is possible to make a, a payment in electronic form and make sure you use your own bank account because there is also a verification process if you are you know if you are not using your own account um, you know and you are using somebody else's account to buy shares for yourself uh you know your application might get rejected so it's important that you use if i am buying for my account shares then the bank account that i'm using should also be mine now uh once everything is done the amount will be transferred to the escrow account as mentioned then the shares will be allotted and the balance in the escrow account will be then returned back to you and at every occasion you will be receiving some kind of notifications and all those things as well so these are the ways in which you can apply for the reliance rights issue as per an rwap is are the two ways that we saw over here so so far what we have seen is uh, you know the issue opening date is 20th may where you can subscribe for this reliance rights issue and it is closing on 3rd june and it is between this 20th may and 3rd june that you will be subscribing for the reliance rights issue uh, with the company but you the good part is you don't have to pay the entire amount right now up front you know so you are going to buy these shares from the company at 1257 rupees per share but at this point you have to pay only 25% that is 314.25 rupees per share at this point in time the balance 25% would be uh, paid after almost a year in may 2021 and the balance 50% that is 628.5 per share will be paid around 1.5 years from now in november 2021 so this entire amount of 1257 rupees that you are going to pay for these shares is actually spread over 1.5 years so if you attach a time value to it so if you discount this cash flow at 6% effectively you are not paying 1257 you are paying little less in today's term because 1257 is going to be paid over a period of time and that is another interesting calculation that you have to consider uh, especially while calculating your returns from this rights issue now another very important and interesting thing that happens because of this arrangement is that because right now you are only going to pay 25% of the rights issue the the shares that you are going to get is going to be partially paid up okay if they are not going to be fully paid up shares okay and that means these shares will be having only 25% voting rights and they would be having only 25% rights to the dividend for every 100 rupee dividend that a normal share will get these people these shares will get only 25 rupees uh, as dividend okay and it will also have a separate isin number because the normal reliance shares is fully paid up share whereas these shares are partially paid up shares so they are going to have a separate isin number they are going to be traded separately till the time they do not become fully paid up as you can see they are becoming fully paid up in november 2021 so till that time they are going to be partially paid up they are going to have a separate isin number and the trading is going to happen happen separately compared to so so what will happen is if you if you are entitled to any of these rights issue after you get the rights issue you will see two reliance shares in your dmat account one will be the fully paid up reliance share and second will be this partly paid up reliance shares that you have bought in rights and this partly paid up share will become fully paid up over 1.5 years and when it becomes fully paid up the both isin will get merged into the original isin of reliance shares right now the fully paid up reliance shares isin will then ultimately prevail but till the time they are partly paid up they are going to be separately traded and they are going to have a separate isin number okay so Uh, that is another important thing that investors should be knowing so now coming back over here if you understand the timeline between 20th may and 3rd june is the time when you would be applying for these right shares with the company how to apply we already discussed asba and uh, rwap account and once you have done that after 3rd june uh, on 10th june will be the date of allotment and finalization of basis of allotment would be happening 
so you know that you are going to receive one share for every 15 shares that you are holding uh, but what about fractional shares so all these things are going to be taken care of so basically people uh, having fractional shares were will be getting a preference so once uh, if there are any unsubscribed shares then these people will be getting preference provided they have applied in the right issue addition for additional right shares but point is all these things is basically final finalization of the allotment and the final allotment uh, basis is going to happen on 10th june on 11th june after the allotment the shares will be credited to your dmat account and on 12th june finally these shares will be listed on the exchange again remember these are partly partially paid up uh, shares that are going to get listed on the exchange which are going to be separate from the original reliance shares which are fully paid up but these partially paid up shares received during in this right issue process uh, will get listed by 12th june uh, 2020 okay so um, should you invest in this right issue well definitely you know uh, they they are offering you these shares at a fair amount of discount um, uh, compared to the market price the promoters themselves will be held, holding existing shares so they are also entitled to rights they have pledged that they will be uh, buying the complete quota of their ri rights they will also and if there is only any unsubscribed portion of the rights issue they will be buying that as well so that gives some kind of confidence to the investors about the growth prospects of the company and beyond that it's a good way to buy good shares uh, you know at a good price uh, in the rights issue and participate in the growth of the company um, you know especially in the retail telecom and digital space that the company is expanding now in so definitely um, you know investors can consider subscribing to this rights issue of reliance shares so thank you so much for watching this video we have covered quite a bit about uh, you know the reliance rights issue and thanks for joining in uh, um, and watching this video